All right. Uh, so now we're going to put into practice some of the things we've been learning over the last couple of days. So let's go to, and, and we have a plethora of cases, and so it's not the same every single day. Uh, but let's, and if I skip around a little bit, I'm just trying to remember. So if you look at the, uh, the last name, the last name should be frontal, frontal plane, and the first name is one. So let's start with frontal plane one. Now these are some of the images um, from our three-dimensional bone that, uh, that our illustrator made, and you'll see them in our talks. And so it, once you get this up on the screen, go over to the image and click on it. You then get the selected procedure, click on deformity, and it kind of enters. And now we want to select the side. So our side of interest, obviously, is the left. And it's AP, so AP left, or you can go right to left, left to right. And then it's going to ask you to calibrate. Typically in the x-rays, this program will automatically select your mag ball. But since this is really not a mag ball and it's not a real image, it's a drawing, it doesn't see the little black dot. But that actually is a mag ball, 2.5 centimeters. But to make it quick, just hit oversize. It'll, it'll ask you how to oversize, like Trevor was saying, just hit accept just to go by. So now at this point, you go into the map, right? We're going to do the map. Go up to limb alignment analysis and click on the arrow, and it gives you a choice of unilateral or bilateral. Go ahead and choose bilateral so we can do a full assessment. As soon as you hit bilateral, you'll have this little magnifying glass, and as you scroll over the image, it's magnified, and now you follow the wizard. The wizard's telling you to put a dot in the center of the head, and it says put a dot on the greater trochanter, and just follow right along. So you should be placing dots just like you've been placing dots in your workbook. If you're lost, if something's not happening, raise your hand. As soon as you finish the dots on one side, if we can, uh, if we can get some assistance right there. Um, as soon as you finish your dots on one side, it'll tell you to start the other side before it gives you your analysis. And as you finish your last click, it automatically gives you your analysis. So now you've just done your, your M and your A out of your map. All you have to do now is you have to pick your bone and if you notice, the measurements that are in green are what are within the population normal that has been programmed. Doesn't mean you have to agree with them. You can even change them. And the ones that are red are with are outside the population normal. It doesn't ab it doesn't actually mean that it's abnormal for your clinical situation. It's just giving you a cue. You have to decide that. So at this point. Would you pick the femur or the tibia? So you'd pick the femur, all right? And so you would look, and, and although you have a, a pretty significant 10 degree deformity at the knee, the, the MAD or your mechanical axis deviation is not that severe, and we'll find out in just a second. So at this point, what you can do is erase your limb alignment lines. If you come underneath your little grid, and your little grid will give you all your preoperative information. It shows you that your right leg is normal, your left leg is abnormal. It lists out your LPFA, LDEFA, MPTA, and so on and so on. Underneath that, you'll see show a limb alignment analysis. Click on that and it goes away. Click on it again, it comes back, goes away, comes back, goes away, so on and so forth. And now you want to get those lines out of the way, just like your workbook ends up with 10,000 lines. This is nice. You can make it go away for a while and bring it back. And so let's go on and find out where the deformity is and correct this bone. So this is where we had the decoder ring. So in the years past, the Cora tools, these were, are now what you in your mind you would call them apex tools. Same things. Cora center of rotation of angulation, the ACA. The axis of correctional angulation, I mean, it's an apex, it's a point. The ACA is a hinge point, it's just a thumbtack. So it's a little bit simplified and that's okay. I accept the fact I'm simple-minded. And so 
let's go the way you find your axis, just like you do in your ABCs. You want to find your apex. You want to find your proximal axis. You scroll over the little, the little schematic over here, and it gives you different choices, mechanical proximal femoral line, three-line method, the anatomic femoral line, all of those things, and it even gives you a simple line. And so what you want to do is, if you go down into the shaft a little bit, choose the simple line or, the, or the, the center line finder, even though in some of the lectures people say, well, it's kind of hard to find the anatomic axis of this segment. It really isn't, you know, especially with the schematic, maybe in a real person. But let's just, this is, we're just teaching you how to use these tools. So that's your proximal axis. You now want to find your distal axis. So scroll back over your little skeleton, go around the knee, and it gives you a mechanical axis, an anatomic distal femoral joint line. And so the anatomic distal femoral joint line, you're using an anatomic axis proximally, hit your anatomic distal femoral joint line. And that creates an 81 degree anatomic lateral distal femoral angle. The other thing that I should have said at the very beginning is with your the lines that you created for your limb analysis are the same lines that the computer uses to create these angles. So zoom in and make sure that you agree with this line. If not, you can manipulate a little bit and say, this is a better distal femoral joint line. And so if we look, what's happening? Where are these two uh, lines meeting? They're going to meet uh, somewhere, as, as uh, John said, probably in China, right? So what does that tell you? You, you're, you don't have an apex. That's obvious, so that means something's hidden. You have a double level, a double level deformity. So you can go backwards. So I want to recreate. I need a middle segment. And so to, to do the middle segment in a workbook, you just draw another line. And this program, you have to go back a step, get rid of your distal axis. You come up here to the undo button, and you will click it a couple times and wait until that goes away. And now choose your distal femoral axis for your proximal deformity. That's going to be in the middle of the bone. So you can choose a midline finder or a simple line. I'm going to choose a simple line. And then I'm going to adjust this line to be an anatomic axis in the middle segment. I'll zoom in. As you notice, as soon as your two lines cross, it creates an apex, it gives you a magnitude, it gives you an osteotomy site at the apex, which is really nice of them, and it also gives you a thumbtack or this little red dot mimicking your, your hinge. At this point, your hinge is set up for an opening wedge. If you look underneath your schematic, you'll see open, neutral, and close. If you hit your neutral wedge, you'll see that the little thumbtack jumps to the apex. If you click on closing, it jumps to the concavity of the deformity. Go ahead and keep it on open wedge. This is, and you're free to move everything in this program. So if you grab your osteotomy site, you can do it wherever you want to. All right, I would uh, suggest that you do it at the apex, like we've learned. If you want to move your hinge point somewhere else, for whatever reason, you right click on your hinge point, and if you look down rotational axis, Go down and hit user defined. That gives you the ability to put this anywhere you want to. But again, put it on the opening wedge. So you know you have a second, you have a second apex slash cora. So go to your schematic, go underneath your schematic, and it says finish and cut or add cora. Click on add cora. Your previous cora lines turn gray. Now your proximal axis of your distal deformity is this mid-segment you've already drawn. To reuse that line without having to redraw it, just right-click it and hit reuse, and it'll turn into a color, okay. not gray. Now find your distal axis of your distal deformity by again going onto the knee in your little schematic and choose the anatomic distal femoral line. Again, you can scroll in, you can adjust this line as, as much as your OCD-ness wants to. Again, you will see that the osteotomy, now I have to zoom way in, and you'll see that 
this, not this dotted line, that's from my artistic whatever, Bone Ninja making this deformity. This little tiny, tiny line, we'll see it better on the x-rays, that's the bisector correction line. And so if it's a reasonable osteotomy site, keep that there. Again, it automatically chooses an opening wedge osteotomy. You can keep that. You can zoom quickly with the, uh, the little wheel zooming in and out. You depress your little mouse wheel and you can move around panned. So once, once you have this deformity, you can see you have a 15 degree deformity, approximately 17 degree deformity distally. And at this point, you hit finish and cut. And automatically, it selects the different regions. It has made two osteotomies where you've designated. And then hit auto alignment. And voila, you have a straight bone. All right. Now, at this point, you might say, well, I want to see my limb alignment analysis. I know it's given me these numbers post osteotomy and they look good. So hide your core lines and then show your limb alignment lines. And then you can scan over that and it gives you all your angles. And you can say, I like that. Now, if you're like me and you like to be in ultimate control, you want to undo your cut. It goes back, hide your lines. and finish and cut without your core lines. And you can grab each individual segment by this little yellow tool. This is, this is your joystick and you can rotate, you can make the person dance, you can do whatever you wanna do. You can shift, you can shift this one, you can make them stand up straight. You can do all of these things and decide how did you do just by eyeballing it hit your limb alignment again and gives you your analysis. So you're still not there. So you can adjust this as you want to. You can have the computer adjust it. Sometimes you might say auto alignment because you did it wrong. And then you can grab this again. You can grab the segments after you've auto aligned and you can, you might want a little bit more valgus because they might have medial compartment OA. You might want a little varus for whatever reason, uh, you know, if they have a very large thigh, things like that. Uh, and, and that's how, how powerful this can be. So let's go. Everybody correct the bone. If we're moving too slow, raise your hand. If we're moving too fast. Okay, just right, great. So let's go back to select the little image. That's the little guy with the star, the new case. And let's try... The first name should be full length. Oh, the first name is full. And the, I mean, the last name is full. And the first name is length two. So full length two. So you should see this robust young fellow. You click on, click on the image. It's going to ask you to do deformity. And then once again, you want to select your image. It's AP, it's left. Again, hit oversize and choose 112% as Trevor went over. And let's go through our analysis. You can see it's a little white, but you can come up on this little sun, sun tool up here and you can adjust the window level <coughs> until you can see the hip a little bit better, excuse me. Once you go back to your little move tool is how you get back to your pointer or you can right click and adjust window level, zoom, move tool, all of those different options. So go ahead and hit limb alignment analysis and go through your wizard. So everybody do your map and let me know where the deformity is. nice thing is all the different digital programs and CAD programs are becoming more and more ubiquitous. It's, uh, it makes all these lines that you've been drawing in your books so much faster, uh, which is really nice, especially in clinical practice. 
Uh, believe it or not, just like Christoph showed you this morning with PAC systems, with TraumaCAD, you know, all the different things, and, and some of them are actually, uh, you, know, you can marry them together, so to speak. So at this point, uh, you finish, your MAD is pretty obvious, it's a varus deformity, and how about uh, you've done your analysis and you see in the grid all your angles, you can even see it on the screen, so now you have to pick your bone, which bone do you want to you wanna fix? So if you look, you have, uh, you have a femur that's 94. Could that be acceptable? You have to think to yourself, you're going to have to make an MPTA of 94. Is that unreasonable? Not really. It could be. It could be, uh, it could be fine. You have an ankle that's a little off. You have to consider what's going to happen to the ankle once you correct your, your tibia. But you also have to look at your joint line congruency angle, and that's the angle between these two, and that's where this example is going to throw you off a little bit. As you do your corrections with a CAD program, they do not undo the joint laxity that's happening in, in a patient, meaning that if you have a, an increased joint line congruency, these nine degrees of deformity will disappear by realigning the bone. And if you realign to normal numbers on the CAD program, you will probably overcorrect the bone. That's a little bit more of a clinical judgment, and that's why some of the devices that you use that are adjustable, especially in these kind of cases, have an advantage uh, because you can tweak them. So you can correct, and if you need to go a little farther, you can after the initial correction. It's hard to mimic this, and you ask any of the surgeons in the room who do a lot of limb deformity, you know, every so often you'll get fooled by the joint laxity. You'll fix it one way, it looks perfect on the table, they stand up and it goes one way or the other. So these are some of the things that you have to take into consideration. Zoom in, zoom in on your x-ray, and if you come look at the, the proximal femur, maybe not that much, click on, and you can manipulate your analysis just to make sure it really fits what you said it was especially around the knee, you'll see that the little alignment lines don't take up the whole joint. You want to make sure that the joint line is centered just like you draw them in the workbook. And you'll see the amount of joint line congruency when you zoom in. So remember the analysis gives you the numbers that you've placed with your little dots. So if your dots are inaccurate, inaccurate then you will have, you know, not good numbers. I don't know if that's proper English, but I'm from Georgia, doesn't matter. So, okay, uh, let's hide the limb alignment lines. And now let's find our, our apex in the femur. Use the three line method. And you'll notice the three line method, very arduous when you are doing it on paper, becomes relatively simple in this kind of a program. All you have to do is your line finder. This is your midline finder up at the top. I am putting the, the little red dots on the cortex and I'm finding the anatomic axis in the femur. This program automatically draws you a parallel one centered at the head and subtends an angle at seven degrees. Let's say you want an AMA of five degrees and not seven degrees. Double click on the seven, enter five, hit okay. Now you're gonna correct to an AMA of five degrees. Let's say you like nine. Double click, nine, now you have a nine degree AMA. All right, and so I measured, let's just say you measured the other side and his AMA is five. That's what you've chosen. You now want to find your distal deformity. You then go over the femur. The distal femur, remember, if you start mechanical, you got to stick mechanical. So you want to choose the mechanical distal femoral joint line. And you automatically get your Cora. It gives you your magnitude of eight degrees. It gives you an osteotomy. And you might say, well, I, I want to use a plate. Or you might say, I want to use a rod, but I don't want to perform my osteotomy at that level for whatever reason. You can move your osteotomy wherever you like. Remember, the translation is going to be the amount of space between these two axes. But if you notice, your hinge point automatically goes with your osteotomy. It's just the way the program's written. So right click on your rotational axis, your 
your hinge point, and then you want to hit user define and then place your hinge point on your correction bisector line. So your femur should be done. Let's go back and let's add a Cora. And let's now address the tibia. I would suggest a proximal tibial joint line. And I like that. And then a distal tibial simple line or a midline finder, whatever you like to use. Adjust. And if you look, the osteotomy site, not too, uh, not too far off for, a, uh, for an external fixation device. That would be plenty of room, two pins, a wire. I do want to make sure that I'm going to create an opening wedge. I'm going to put it on the fibula. Again, if you zoom way in, you'll see that little dotted line. That's your, that's your bisector, your correction bisector line. So at this point, <clears throat> hit finish and cut, auto align. Now, if you hide your core lines and you look at the leg, you're like, boy, that looks pretty nice. <clears throat> if you do your show a limit lines, you'll see that you're still varus. And that's that joint laxity. Look at your joint congruency angle. That hasn't changed. It will change as, you, as the bones correct, but you might find that as he stands up, if your mechanical axis is perfectly in the middle without the joint line congruency, without the joint instability, he still might teeter-totter into varus. So you can grab your distal segment and give it a little bit more correction. You know, instead of correcting five degrees, correct nine degrees or 10 degrees. Say, okay, I'm gonna do 10 degrees. And then see what happens. All of a sudden, you can see that it's made an M MPTA of 91 degrees, and it's giving you a red signal. 91 is fine. You can actually go up to 94 just in, in different clinical scenarios. Sometimes you want to go to 94, 95 to get uh, to Fugasawa's point for medial arthritis. And so do you really have to do the femur? I'm just showing you this uh, as an academic exercise. But the one caveat is you have to be careful with these children or young adults with lots of ligamentous laxity and what they're going to do. Do you have to tighten the lateral collateral ligament? Not necessarily. If you have normal bony axis, the soft tissues will follow. But that, that doesn't go for congenital abnormalities. That's a whole different universe. All right. Has everybody got a straight leg or a straight leg to their liking? <clears throat> 